How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we have another submission from someone who wants to see if there's anything they can do to improve at a certain boss with PVM. So today we're going to be taking a look at a clip where someone's going to go to Ragsha and they've messaged me on Discord asking if I can take a look at this and give them any feedback to help them improve their kill times and just give them any sort of step forward whatsoever. Now I'm aware that I am personally not the best in the game at PVM and I'm not the best at Ragsha as well but I do feel like these videos will help out quite a lot of people and if I can help this one person get even just a step further and improve their kills just a little bit then I am more than happy to do that and help out. So basically in this video what we'll be doing is watching their clip, watching their kill, uh, looking for any sort of things that we can improve on and give them advice on and then we'll talk about that and explain why they should be doing different things and give them any suggestions that may improve their kill. Just like the last video that we did on this, any toxic comments will be removed but we didn't get a single one last time so that's actually great so thank you very much to all of you but also if you are someone who is really good at PVM as well or you see any tips that you can give for this guy then drop them in the comments down below and not only will you help that person but I'm sure you'll help someone else as well. But this should be quite interesting so if you do enjoy make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you are someone who would like to do something similar to this as well and think you would benefit from it then send me a message on Discord. There'll be a link in the description to my Discord server. Send me a direct message on Discord uh, and let me know and we can try and sort something out for you as well. Anyway, let's take a look at this clip and let's see if we can help this person out. Alright, so this is our clip here that we've got. So it is in a little bit low graphics settings, but that's okay. Don't worry about it too much. As long as we can see what's going on, it really doesn't matter. And I'm pretty sure this should mean that it runs pretty smoothly. So taking a look initially, your user interface is set up pretty nicely. I quite like this. I don't that that matters too much, but at least I can see what's going on fairly nicely. So that's always good. You've got, uh, looks like you've got normal Serenic armor here. I think that's just standard Serenic. Uh, you've got an Ascension main hand and a Glaive off hand. That's absolutely fine as well, to be fair. I think that's what my range setter was for so long. Uh, you've got the Striker ring, is it? The new range ring, which is fine. And your inventory setup, you've got your Overload, your Elder Overload. You've got a Prayer Renewal, which I love to see. And you've got a Adrenaline Potion and possibly, I think you said it was a Weapon Poison. When I asked you on Discord, you said, I think this one's a Weapon Poison. Um, or one of them is a weapon poison and one is the adrenaline potion. I assume this might be the adrenaline potion because you got more doses of it and that's a weapon poison that you're probably not going to use because you did mention that you bring it. You're not too sure why you bring it. Um, the dart bow and the arrows is your planted feet switch, you said. So that's absolutely fine. You have a dart bow in the essence of finality, which you can use with your attentions, of course. And you have a hydrix bolt switch and you've brought two brews. You've got a shield, ring of vigor. Perfect. And I assume this is your bladed dive. Uh, to deal with the pulls, so that's pretty cool to see as well. I assume this Ripper Demon here is yours, so it's good to see that you are bringing um, Ripper Demon along with you, so you're pretty comfortable food-wise by the look of it, which is great to see as well. And then you've got a Revolution Bar, but this is set up the whole way across, and it's not set up in a way that looks like it will be for Revolution. So... I'm wondering whether you're going to actually let the revolution really do anything or not, but we'll have to see. So let's just get into this. We'll watch through the video normally without really pausing too much, unless I really see something I want to talk about. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about stuff like that. I think that's the best way to do it like we did last time. Uh, and we can touch on stuff more in depth on the way through the second time. Anyway, let's have a look, see what you like. Okay, so you filled your adrenaline up. Uh, do you have an adrenaline urn? No, you may have the relics. See, I don't know what relics you've got. Uh, you did send me the perks, so I will talk about those later on. And I know there's some upgrades that we can do with that. But as for relics, I'm not too sure what you have, but it's not that big of a deal. It's fine. Uh, you did stall your adrenaline with the surge, so that's great. Dropped your planted feet death swiftness straight away. Did you use an adrenaline potion? Don't think you did just yet. That's okay. Get off your bleeds. The one thing I will mention straight away is using needle shot before a bleed doesn't actually do anything for you so um if you are letting that go of revolution then you are losing a bit of dps there by always using needle shot before a bleed it doesn't really do anything for you it does look like you are clicking your abilities though so you're not letting it go through too much okay you know you got your prayer switching down pretty good the one thing that you could have done is bring a vulnerability bomb that would help out quite a bit 10 percent again uh, vulnerability bombs are definitely really useful. You've got them bound on your uh, on your thing there, so I'm assuming maybe you've maybe you've ran out. There is a space missing in your inventory, but that could just be for your planted feet as well. Uh, vulnerability bombs so good. So far though, it's looking pretty good. So you said that your kill time is usually about seven to eight minutes, so that's why you wanted to do this to see what you could do differently. But so far, it's looking pretty decent. Prayer switches are pretty much on point. Okay, you're doing good damage. Your damage is absolutely fine. This could be a matter, like a bigger sort of thing of just upgrading gear. Um, there is a couple of things that we can talk about, definitely, so far. 
but a lot of it might be upgrading gear uh, and just putting practice in honestly you, you're doing pretty good by the look of it but there is definitely some things we can talk about to help you out and you call that bomb but i mean it is what it is you know how to deal with it by the look of it so i don't think that's anything to really criticize you know how to deal with those yeah, you change the turmoil to be able to do bladed dive, so that means you're pretty comfortable with your, your switches for all that sort of stuff too. Which shows anyway, because your prayer flicks were on, on point, and you've already changed back to anguish, so. And I really wish you had a Vulm Bomb though. <laughs> I really wish you had a Vulm Bomb. That would have been so helpful. That'll help you out a lot. I need to find out whether you just forgot those or not. Okay, you fire enough tendrils whenever you can. These resas here, by the look of it, your food is fine. So, I don't think you need to use the res. Like, I get it, you're just trying to be conservative with food. But, like, your prayer flicking's good, you're using soul split. You shouldn't really need those reses. Um, you're missing the odd, pre the, the odd hit here and there. But those reses are, are losing you a bit of damage. So, I'd say you'd, you'd, you'd be fine without that, to be fair. So far, you've not missed a, a tail swipe, which is great to see. Did you kill that um, thing straight away? Yeah, oh, no, it came back after the spin. Yeah, you did kill it, that's fine. Okay, so what, what time are we on here? We're on 3 minutes 34. Okay, so 3 minutes 34, you've already phased into phase 4. Curious why it's taking so long, to be fair, but let's just let's just go through and we'll have a see. So that the first couple of the first few phases, by the way, was really good. You did a really good job. You could definitely get some more speed in there with um, upgrades to your perks and stuff, because I know what perks you've got. Um, using the Vulm Bomb will help as well. Smoke Cloud if you want to bring it. This is all stuff that adds to your inventory though. But uh, considering how much food you've used. I think you can definitely spare the inventory space here. I haven't seen the the um, Hydrix bolts being switched yet, but that doesn't matter too much. I mean, I don't bring Hydrix bolts here, so <laughs> it's not the end of the world. You know when the mechanics are coming because you didn't go back up the ramp fully to um, make sure of that. So you've got the shield done now. This is where you want to be grabbing this anima. You've got three anima at the moment, but you're not grabbing any more. Maybe you'll go now. No. Okay. So... It doesn't look like you're going to use the anima, which is huge, by the way. So picking up the anima is not the only thing that that matters. Like you, you have to activate it as well with this button here. I'm wondering whether you know the button's there or not, <laughs> because it's just only ancient curses. Maybe you don't know it's there. If not, that's huge, and that's going to be your difference. Like that is going to be the difference in your kill times straight away. That's going to be so big. I did wonder if you didn't use it because of death swiftness, but that's gone now as well. You're doing this last phase great though. Other than not using this anima, you're doing this phase absolutely great. Like dealing with the mechanics from the, the bosses throwing at you. Doesn't seem like a big issue. So I think your main thing here is going to be using that anima stuff. And then maybe working on your revolution bar a little bit. We'll talk about that though. The revolution bar, we could, we could change that around a little bit. Probably to make your life a bit easier as well because you're clicking quite a lot of stuff. Um... Which is fine. Clicking stuff's fine. People, there's so many people that click stuff that do better than me at PVM. I know plenty of people who are better PVMers than I am, and they click everything. But there's some things. Prayer dropped doesn't matter too much. I mean, you've you've got your prayer renewal there. Are you wait? You're just using prayer renewals and not restores. Or oh, that's another thing. Yeah, okay. There's there's another thing we can do there. That's cool. I should be writing this stuff down, but I'll remember. It's all good. But yeah, clicking's fine. But I think your revolution bar could use a little bit of work just so that it doesn't. Um, use things like needle shot before bleeds and stuff like that. Ideally, you want that like to be used before snipe or something along those lines, or your thresholds. Your DPS prayer is also off here, but that's because your prayer dropped. I assume that's not a normal thing. You haven't used Ranima, so this is going to be huge. Like this will knock two minutes off straight away almost. You'll come down from seven minutes to five minutes pretty quick. Okay, so this kill took you six minutes forty-five seconds ish. Six forty-three. It says in the chat. And that's not bad, to be fair. Like, if you're new to Raksha, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. But you said to me that you felt like you were hitting a wall and you wanted to see what you could do next. So there's definitely some stuff that we can talk about and it will help you out a lot. The big thing is going to be using this anima. You had 18 at the end. It doesn't matter too much. You want about 6 to 7 from what I've experienced. People can correct me if that's not exactly accurate. But you only need to pick up about 6 to 7 before you start getting di diminishing returns on it, I think. Um, it might change a little bit depending on your gear. But I think that's usually about fine anyway. But using that will make such a big difference to you. Like, it will be huge. So that's going to be massively important. Um, there's some other stuff as well that we can talk about that will help out a lot. So let's do that, shall we? Uh, one thing I need to find out is if your Ripper Demon is using scrolls. Because if it is, 
then that's great and it's something we can do really big that's going to help um but if it's not then you can add scrolls to it <laughs> and of course that will make a massive difference too so let's go back to the beginning and we'll talk about a few things and then we'll go through it again and we'll go a bit more in depth about certain things okay so just like the last video i wanted to start off with like inventory and stuff i feel like that's gonna be quite important and quite a good thing to start with uh the actual preset of going to a boss is such a big part because it can make such a huge difference without you even really thinking about it that much so bringing along a vulnerability bomb will be huge it's 10 percent damage you're using at the moment you're doing a seven minute fight but 10 percent damage across an extra like a seven minute fight it adds up like that's going to be a lot of damage and it will reduce your kill times by quite a lot you'll need to use one every one minute so you, i would probably say because of the few things that you're going to add to this your kill time will probably drop to about five minutes ish so if you bring along five just, just chuck 10 in, 10 in your inventory and you'll just need to use one every minute or you'll literally just use five a fight um i know that sounds like a bit of money but ratchet has the capability of dropping like a one point six bill a drop or whatever it is you'll make it back you'll definitely make it back so if you're not using them because of cost don't just just use them they're, they're absolutely worth it you will see the difference and eventually you'll be able to bring that kill time down to like four minutes three minutes and like it'll it'll be so worth it and you'll only use like three or four a kill the next thing is you bring a quite a lot of food how much food did you have at the end so you had most of your food here at the end as you can see um you could definitely switch that out with blue blubber jellyfish now this is important because you won't lose adrenaline whenever you eat and now you only ate a couple of times but if you change your food for blue blubbers whenever you do eat you won't lose that adrenaline which will help out quite a bit and yeah you, you're not panic eating like you don't need to to brew and eat because if you did you'd have way more brews and you would have gone through more food so your health isn't dropping to the point where you're like panicking big time so i definitely swap those sharks for, for for blubbers i mean you're bringing sharks anyway so you're not stress eating like through rock tails or soups or anything just swap those for blue blubbers trust me it will make a big difference you are using the dark magic aura that's absolutely fine here you, nothing really mentioned with that that's that's great dark magic's fine using a dps aura that's all that really matters accuracy at rack is, is great anyway so it, it's nothing to worry about uh, one thing that you did do is use quite a lot of reses throughout the thing we'll talk about that when we get there but i think otherwise for the preset like setting up you could use smoke cloud if you have access to it i'm not sure if you do with 90 magic but if you have access to smoke cloud or if you could get access to it like uh, unlock that that will make a big difference too because every time you crit you'll be doing more damage uh, but that includes bringing two no one rune pouch with you as well which you could drop the food you absolutely can you've got the room for it you could do that you'd need ingenuity of the humans as well which i can't see on here so you may need to get that that's a big upgrade uh quite expensive actually so maybe smoke cloud is not an option but eventually it will be so let's just uh press play and we'll go through um i think that's pretty much it for your inventory you were fine with your, your switching and stuff the rest of it seemed all good um okay so this is another thing for inventory actually you've got a ripper demon and now i haven't checked with you yet if you've got if you're using scrolls or not we're going to assume that you are because I shoot you're at Raksha, there's a good chance that you're probably just you're using scrolls. So, if you're using scrolls here, you want to just bring one super prayer and all, and then bring about three spiritual prayer potions. And you want to bind those to whatever keybinds you have, if you have a keybind, but if you don't, then you're clicking your potions anyway and it doesn't matter. But you want to drink those to put your prayer back up rather than using the prayer and alls. Because when you drink a spiritual prayer potion, it will increase your summoning points again, and that'll allow your Ripper Demon to do a lot more damage. Like, it'll allow, allow it to fire off specs again and again and again. And that increases your damage by a hell of a lot. It's really important. So you want to bring about three of those of you as well. Okay, so you drop your Death Swiftness. Now, this is where I was talking about the Revolution Bar. You'll see here, you've used uh, your Needle Shot straight away, and then I think your next ability is going to be... Oh, it's Snipe. So maybe you do know this. Okay. And now you're going to click both your Bleeds. Okay, yeah. So... It seems like you do know and you're not letting the revolution bar do everything so what i would suggest you do is oh, this is a difficult one because i assume you've got revolution on there because you probably like don't want to do the full transition to go into full manual and if you're clicking abilities i totally get that what you could probably do though is if you do click most of your abilities is have revolution just do your basics but have them set up in a way that it's not a waste so you're clicking your bleeds anyway so they could even go at the end or not even inside your revolution bar then you could have your revolution bar set up so it has needle shot snipe um whatever of the tusker's wrath and stuff like that and you could have that set up in there with piercing shot and binding shot whatever uh, sacrifice and all that you could have that in the revolution bar and then you can click the abilities that you normally click anyway yourself on the outside of it 
It just means that you don't have to worry about missing abilities, but at the same time, when you're clicking stuff, it's not gonna accidentally force out the wrong thing. Because if you do use Needle Shot and then a bleed, you, do, you are technically losing uh, an, an increased bit of damage on the next hit, right? So it would be good to be able to have that control, but at the same time, um, I, I can, it's not the biggest of deals because you're almost doing full manual anyway by the look of it. So if I just let this play through, you've put both your bleeds on and then you're gonna use, what did you use, rapid fire. So that's still good. Like you've used needle shot and then rapid fire, but there is gonna be times through this every now and again that you're gonna just miss that little bit of extra damage when you do use like a needle shot and a bleed. But that's fine. It is what it is, uh, but that's just a suggestion that you could do. You actually went then to try and use a vulnerability bomb, I think. Unless it was just a coincidence that your mouse went over it, but if you look, your mouse does go to a vulnerability bomb. I think you, you've probably forgotten them, but vulnerability bombs are so important. So make sure you've got them. I'm gonna say that you've, I'm gonna say you want to use it, but you don't have it on your preset. Because if you equip this dart bow, both of these weapons are gonna come off, which means that you wouldn't have inventory space anyway. So get rid of the freaking weapon poison and get a vulnerability bomb. One other thing is, uh, let's have a look, right here at the beginning. When you go in, you'll use your death swiftness, but you don't use an adrenaline potion. You should definitely use an adrenaline potion straight away. So when you've death swifted here, you should you should adren pot straight away. Just adren pot straight away. You have a long time until the first mechanic actually comes uh, before the for the bomb. You can step back like two squares or one square even for the spin, and it's not a big deal. So if you adren pot here, you could even have a chance at skipping that mage bomb at the beginning. So this would be huge. Using the adrenaline potion here and getting to your threshold straight away, you could use um, snapshot and rapid fire before you even have to move away from the spin. Or you could use snapshot, move away, and then rapid fire after that. So to make sure that rapid fire doesn't get cancelled. Um, that would be huge and it would help out your damage a lot because you're only just now getting to thresholds So if you use the adrenaline potion earlier, you definitely want to do that If this one dose here is your adrenaline potion uh, and you're saving that for the end Just bring a couple because you've got long enough where if you use it at the beginning You'll then be able to use it again when you get towards the next phase and you can use it at the beginning of phase four So I would suggest that you do use that adrenaline potion like straight away as soon as you death swift adrenaline pop That's gonna be something that you want to do almost every place in the game except like a couple so important just definitely do that the bombs just come out and you're only 50k damage off if you'd managed to get like another couple of thresholds off because of that adrenaline potion you definitely could have skipped that bomb like you're getting close to skipping that bomb with a vulnerability bomb as well yeah you you, you can skip that and that would be that'd be that's great damage that's what you want to aim for you want to aim for skipping that mage bomb and you know you're doing pretty good uh, dps wise so you see here this is what i was meaning before see here you, you'll try and click your um Dark bow in a second, but you'll notice it doesn't go off. So instead, Revolution is going to pick something else for you. So you'll see here, you click it, it doesn't go off, and Revolution just use your bleed. Uh, but you'll then you'll go back and click it again. So this here has missed missed out on a little bit of an opportunity, right? Because it's probably used needle shot and then you bleed. You've lost a little bit of damage doing that. So if you do set up your Revolution bow in a different way, and then maybe because you're using keybinds to prayer flick here, you can see these are changing, you're not clicking them. You're doing that pretty well and pretty comfortably. So it may be worth just setting a couple of keybinds that you're actually quite comfortable with as well for things like your dart bow, things like um, just your threshold abilities, maybe. Because it seems like you're comfortable enough doing it. So that would help out a lot because you know you've got ability queuing. It's not about that you've not tried to do it. You just misclicked it. And if you misclick it, then revolution just goes, ah, frick yeah. It's like it doesn't matter. But a keybind can't miss. So yeah, it's definitely worth doing that if you, if you think you can, if you feel up to it. But... Again, that's another thing that's quite iffy, but I mean, you, you're pretty on pretty on it here, dude. There's, there's quite a lot of stuff um, that you, you're doing spot on. So here, this is what I was talking about before, right? You have a full inventory of food. You've not eaten yet. Now, that might be because you've just used a res. Now, you'll see here, you're going to res this hit. Instead of resing here, you could be doing more damage. Now, I know that sounds silly and like it's like min-maxing, but you're trying, you, you've messaged to try and improve your kill time. So... If you don't res throughout the fight, because I know you do this about probably about six or seven times throughout the fight, every like every now and again, you're just gonna whip out your shield, you're gonna heal up. And yes, that's probably why you don't use so much food. But if you bring blue blubbers, you can just munch on one, just munch one, have a little sip of a brew, don't res, get another ability off instead. That will increase your damage by quite a bit because instead of resing all those times and missing out on hits, you're just gonna get damage through. And it could be a dart bow, it could be a snapshot, it could be rapid fire, whatever. That's time not spent using an defensive ability. And of course, that's gonna help you out quite a bit. Your soul split flicks are great, uh, so you will not be using that much food. Hit, get, getting hit by bombs and stuff doesn't matter. You, it's going to happen every now and again. I don't think that's down to you not understanding it, like I said before. Yeah, I want to see how you deal with this uh, minion here. So you get back on Raxi first, and then you're back on the minion. 
and you've used okay, you put the bleed on it and then you've used snapshot okay so you did so what i would suggest you do here is rather than putting snapshot on that put just put both bleeds on it because it's going to walk the bleed and that'll kill it off for you so you've put your bleed on it but then you use snapshot anyway so you can either just use snapshot and a basic normal basic uh, or just put both bleeds on it and then you can use snapshot and rapture there's only like a slight thing again but it's not the end of the world but it's just little things that will help out a little bit you see there you rezzed again but you actually it actually splashed too so you didn't get a heal and you didn't get to do some damage so yeah i would recommend just dropping these rezzes unless you desperately need it to save your life i'd just drop them you don't need them um <laughs> your food's fine you could you could definitely just munch a couple of blue blubber jellyfish won't use your adrenaline uh, and you'll be fine yeah you miss a couple of prayer flicks but it's not going to end your life too big like you're doing you're doing fine with it otherwise Okay, so you phased at 333 like we said last time, which is fine. And with your vulnerability bombs and with the other things we've talked about, having the um, Ripper Demon Scrolls with the Spiritual Prayer Potions, you'll see this drop quite a bit. Like the Ripper Demon alone will drop that below three minutes. And that's pretty decent. Like that's not bad whatsoever. Every now and again, I'll do a crappy kill and get that. Like <laughs> it happens. But um, normally you're probably looking about two minutes. Just over two minutes probably is a good goal. It's at least that's what I sort of aim for. Just over two minutes for getting through here. Um, so that's not too bad. And the next thing was like the anima. Your anima was the huge thing here. This is going to make your kill so much faster. When he does the shield, so we'll, we'll wait until you get there and see if there's anything else to talk about, but when he does the shield and you pick up the anima, that's like the huge, biggest thing ever. So here, I think you're building towards death swiftness. Oh wait, you just use a threshold. So what I would do here is as soon as you come through, build to death swiftness and drop that down. Drop death swiftness straight away, and then you can do as much damage as you can, and then as soon as the anima comes out, you can pick that up, because here now, you, if you drop it now, you're gonna be running around, picking up all this anima, and by the time you come back, the desperateness is going to be either nearly gone or like it's going to be gone completely and you're going to kind of waste it or you're going to get stuck on the other side picking up the anima so what you want to do is as soon as he breaks as soon as you break the shield this is when you want to pick up the anima the reason being is you'll notice in just a second he'll stand there for a little bit you get a little bit longer than normal see there's a little weight there that's the time you want to pick the anima up so just run out pick up the ones that are on your side even and if you get about six or seven as soon as you get that click this button here as soon as you click that button you're going to get increased damage by a hell of a lot it's going to be huge like, your damage is going to fly up, dude. But if you death swiftness it first, by the time you've done that shield, you've mostly used it anyway, and you won't be wasting it when you run around uh, picking up the anima. So it's not it's a lot better to use it there rather than, like, using it towards when you pick up the anima. But I assume that's because you don't know how this works properly. Uh, so you've just used death swiftness at whatever time you thought was right. And then once you've used the anima, you just want to do as much DPS as you can. Like, you're doing fine here. You would use vulnerability bombs. Like, you would you would literally drop the vulnerable bomb where your Ripper Demon stood like literally on the very closest tile that you can to here and that would get racked here as well so vuln bombs here would be great as well so your prayer dropped here oh you actually clicked it right so i was going to talk about the prayer drop in uh, and you're not putting that back on but you'll see here you actually tried to click it but you misclicked so you've got a key bind for that but it is l so that's quite a long way so i guess it makes sense why you're clicking it so maybe reworking your key binds could be something you could look at that would probably help you out quite a bit not not forgetting to get that back on would definitely increase your damage a bit but if you'd use the anima if you triggered the anima here you'd, you'd have been done by now you wouldn't have even got the second shield i don't think i think you would have managed to get through without a second shield making it let's have a look if if we did it if you triggered the anima and you didn't get a second shield you'd be down to five minutes 30. but because you've used the anima you would probably how much health did you have you have 100k there's no if you'd use the anima you wouldn't have got second shield and you wouldn't have taken that long to get to it so you probably would have been about five minutes like that's huge in itself just just from using the anima alone so you definitely want to make sure you get that dude so this is another thing you've just dropped death swiftness here which means you've then got to rebuild your adrenaline back up you only have 90k left so what i would have done is just probably used thresholds anyway because by the time you've built your adrenaline back up you could have used thresholds and probably dropped that by a lot more like you're only on you've only gone down 10k now you've had death swiftness up You've only dropped his health by 10k since doing that. If you just used two or three thresholds, dart bow a couple of times, because you had 100% adrenaline, uh, you probably could have done a lot more damage than the 10k that you did, bringing you closer to killing him and getting a little bit of a kill time better. Uh, if you've got a lot more health than 100k, like 200, 300k or whatever, then yeah, just drop the death swiftness. But without the adrenaline potion, you've only brought one adrenaline dose uh, as well. That was the one dose. But without that... You don't really want to be using death swiftness when it's such low health already cool and that is the kill done the big thing is your inventory again switch out for blue blubber jellyfish in fact i'll put something on screen showing you what sort of things you could do i'll put a screenshot on of a preset that would work great for you 
Um, but basically, you want to have blue bubble jellyfish instead of the sharks. Bring about three spiritual prayer potions. Bring more adrenaline potions. Don't just bring one dose because you could use at least two or three doses in the fight. Probably two doses. Bring two doses at least, but just bring a full one if you've got it. Bring vulnerability bombs because vulnerability bombs are going to be huge, like absolutely huge. And then other than that, honestly, it, there's not really much to me to go through, but your perks and stuff could definitely use an upgrade. Uh, you've got like very basic perks, which is fine because obviously you're, you're getting into PVM still. You're not a maxed account or anything, um, but your perks could definitely help out quite a bit there. So that's like perks are a cheap way to actually get a lot more damage. Like you don't have to get best in slot perks straight away, but you could improve them a little bit. Um, I'm not going to go through every single perk that you have and tell you exactly what to get. You could probably ask me on Discord afterwards if you want, and I'll show you what perks I have in my range gear, um, or ask in my Discord, and people will probably help you out with that too. But upgrading your perks will definitely help a lot. But your main things are going to be making sure your Epidemon has scrolls, using the anima on phase four, using vulnerability bombs, and bringing spiritual prayer potions. Bring those, just do those things, literally just those, and you'll see a big difference. Then there's all the little things like working on your revolution bar uh, and setting a few keybinds. That'll be important too. So you miss, you do, you do, are doing a few misclicks and having to go back into that again, which is losing you a bit of damage. But it's not like absolutely huge, so it's not like it's the biggest thing to worry about. But changing this as well so you don't have needle shot then bleeds, because when you are missing abilities and it is using those instead, that is a little bit of lost damage. And make sure in, like, if you set it up in a way that it makes more sense, you have needle shot and snipe and then other stuff, and then even just put the, the abilities that you tend to click, because you do a lot of clicking on the outside, then that'll help out a bit as well. But that's all stuff that you can do on, on the side. Like That's not going to be a dramatic change to these other things. Then, of course, stop using res. <laughs> stop using res. You don't need it. You, you, you're doing absolutely fine on food. Your prayer switches are spot on. So don't worry about it too much. The res is literally just uh, a waste of your time at the moment. If you need to res because you feel like you're going to die, then res. Like the only time I would really use res at Raksha is if a rock is about to fall on my head and it's going to kill me. Or if I'm really nearly dead or I'm out of food, that sort of stuff. Like there's, there's just no need to use it otherwise. Um, just eat some blue blubbers, drink a bit of sardom and brew. You'll be fine. That's the best way to do it. You're not wasting time on that defensives and stuff. Otherwise, dude, I think you're doing absolutely fine. So if you do have any questions, of course, just ask me in the, in Discord. I am absolutely happy to go over things with you on what I've said. If anyone watching thinks there's other stuff that I've missed that could be useful, of course, don't go like too like fully in depth like he's, he's just trying to get the next step rather than like becoming evil lucario overnight of course <laughs> so just give like little tips that you see but if anyone does have any then do drop them down below i'm sure he'll be very grateful for those and i do appreciate it if you did enjoy this video everybody watching do leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new if anyone else would like to go through something like this where i can look through your clips and give you any other advice that we can find and then we can get people commenting advice as well to help you improve in pvm then send me a dm on discord and we can get a clip recorded and sent in and we can go over the same things as well. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you to my channel members for the extra support. Your names will be on screen right now, of course, as always. So thank you all so much to you guys. If anyone else is interested in joining all the channel members, just click the join button by the sub button and you can see what perks you do get while you support the channel. Otherwise, guys, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you all in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye.